Get ready to enter the futuristic universe of the Pierce Brown book series. This is our review of Red Rising. Red Rising is a hand management set collection game where players deploy and activate cards while working towards three end goals. And I don't know much about the Red Rising universe, but it definitely drew me in. This is an enjoyable game, however, it's probably better if you are familiar with the source material. We'll tell you why after this quick how to play. At the start of the game, each player draws five cards for their starting hand. On each player's turn, they have the option of performing a lead or a scout action. To perform a lead action, players will deploy one of their cards face up on one of the four spaces on the board, and then take the deploy action if there is one. Then players can take the top card of another location and take that location's action, or they can take the top card from the deck and roll the dice for a bonus. To perform a scout action, draw the top card of the deck and then place it in any location and then take that location's action. The end game conditions are a player has seven or more helium, a player has seven or more influence, or a player has reached or surpassed seven on the fleet track. The end game is triggered when all three end game conditions are met by any number of players or when two conditions are met by a single player. Players add up the points from their cards, their fleet track, influence, and helium, and the player with the highest score wins. I wasn't really familiar with the source material for Red Rising. However, we're big fans of Stonemeyer Games, so of course we had to get this game and add it to our collection. And I really enjoy the presentation of this game. The artwork is amazing. Even though I don't understand what any of it is, it still looks very cool. And the mechanics of the game are still kind of fun. So even though I don't know the source material, I still enjoy playing the game. This was just one of those times where I'm walking through Target and then I see the cover of this and I'm like, oh, okay, that looks kind of cool. Then it didn't hurt that it was Stonemeyer Games. And then I read the back and it talks about your houses and collecting. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, let's give it a try. You know, how bad could it be? I really like the artwork on the cards and learning a little bit more about the mechanics and the Red Rising universe got me a little bit interested, but I still need to learn a bit more to see if I love it. <laughs> The whole Red Rising universe is set in a dystopian future and there's class warfare and you're trying to work your way up through the, the system and all that kind of stuff. So even if you're not familiar with the novel that the game is based on, it's still a sci-fi theme. So if you like sci-fi games, you could probably still get into it and learn a little bit of the story while you're playing without having to read the books and you can enjoy it. I just think that you'll enjoy it more if you do know the source material because every single card is different. Each card is a different character. Each card can affect a different card in a different way. So some cards only have one certain card that can't be played or you lose points if you play them together or they gain points if you play them together. And it probably makes more sense and flows a little bit better if you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I know that character and I know that character. It makes sense that they go together or that they don't go together. So that's what I mean when I say that if you know the source material, you'll probably enjoy it a little bit more. When I looked into the story a little bit, right, it's a dystopian future. They're broken up into 14 different casts that are divided by colors. Now, had I known a little bit more about the universe, then maybe I would appreciate the golds and the purples and the pinks, you know, because I'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, in that universe, yeah, the pinks, that's what they do. So this makes sense. As you play the game, you start to pick up on what the different colors do anyways, and you might go after those more. So it's kind of fun to learn along the way. So you're trying to create the perfect hand of cards that go together. Some cards will have certain requirements in order to gain even more points. So every card is worth points, but then at the bottom it'll say how you can get more points. And this one, you get more points if the jackal or if it's a gray card. So that's over here on the side. So it's written and it's displayed. And because of these mechanics and each card being different, the one downside of this game, whether you know the source material or not, is that there is a lot of reading in this game. Every card is different, so you're always reading what's the deploy action, how do I get more points, what cards need to be played together? What happens if I play it with this one? You're looking at the name and going, okay, Bone Riders needs to go with Jackal or Gray cards or something like that. So your first game, second game, maybe even several games down the road, you still may not have seen every card. You may not know what every card does or what every card works with every other card. So you're always sitting there going, all right, let me read this. And then when you're playing, okay, okay, now I need to draw a card from one of the other places. Now let me read every card. What's that action? What's going on here? Kenny's right. With every card being different, it does make it a little bit slow if someone's got to read like, okay, I get to choose one of these. Uh, which one might I want? That's why knowing the colors a little bit kind of makes your choices a little bit easier because if there's one color that you're going for or that has a certain power, just for example, like reds, I think they're more of a take that deploy action on them. So go for the reds in case you're trying to like get after other people. 
And there are some take that actions on some of the cards where you can affect the other players. And if you have one player who really wants to target you, you can have five cards, but then they start targeting you, making you have to get rid of your card. You can be down to two or three cards. At the end of the game, you know you're going to lose because you don't have any cards anymore. There is an asymmetric component to this. In the very beginning, every player is also given a house. And whenever you take a certain action on Luna to get the Sovereign token, you'll be able to perform whatever your asymmetric power is. Usually it's going to be one of those like move up on the track, get a heal add to the Institute some influence, but everyone has one and it adds a little bit of variety to the game. So overall, I love the artwork. It kind of reminds me of those comic cards back in the day, the Marvel comic cards. The mechanics themselves, new, I like it. Not too new or too different. I will say though, the biggest thing of just not knowing Red Rising, you're sitting in there the whole time like, all right, I just need Darrow. Okay, who's Daryl? What does he look like? What color is he? So that part of not knowing it like takes a little bit away for me. I'll definitely play it again if someone wants to play, but I don't know if I'm gonna like go and learn about the whole universe just because of this. So to that end, I'll give it a five and a half. Overall, there's a lot about this game that I enjoy, especially the artwork. I love how every card is different and it's very cool, awesome looking artwork. However, because every card is different, that makes the mechanics a little bit more challenging as far as being able to pair up your cards and or getting through it in a timely manner because everyone's reading and trying to figure out what all the cards do. So there's a cool world building aspect of this game, but because of that, the mechanics suffer a little bit, I think. So overall, I'm gonna give the game a five. And that was our review of Red Rising. What'd you think? Are you ready to build up your house and topple the system? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to see our other Stone Meyer reviews, check out the links in our description below. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny. And I go party like a board gamer.